Many true dairy goats are basically just Nigerian dwarfs crossed with any of the standard dairy goats that are recognized by ADGA. These breeds are Alpine, La Mancha, Nubian, Oberhosley, Hagenberg, Sonnen, Sable, and Jersey, if I'm saying that right. Technically, purebred Nigerian dwarves are also miniature dairy goats, and you can register them with the Miniature Dairy Goat Association, or MDGA. But in this video, I'm only going to be talking about those that are cross between Nigerian dwarves and standards. If you want to learn more about Nigerian dwarves, you can check out the description, and I will provide a link to my Nigerian dwarf breed profile video. The best thing about miniature dairy breeds is they can be selectively bred to be much smaller than your standard dairy goat, but they can still produce a lot of milk. Miniature dairy goats range from 25 to 31 inches at the withers, depending on the breed and gender. Other breed standards, such as color, face profile, and ear type, are determined by the ADGA breed standards. I will have a link below to the ADGA breed standards list so you can check them out yourself. Probably the most confusing thing about mini dairy goats is the generations. First generations, or F1s, are the first cross between a purebred Nigerian dwarf and a purebred standard dairy goat. F1s are called experimentals. F2s are the next generation down. After two F1s have been crossed, you get an F2. F2s are also experimental. Experimentals do not have to be conformed to the breed standard to be registered or shown. F3s, 4s, and 5s are called American, and they must meet all breed standards for the larger breed, except for size, which must conform to the miniature breed standard. Americans cannot have more than 70% or less than 30% of Nigerian dwarf or their standard breed. When crossing two goats from the same generation, the kids will move up one generation unless they don't meet the standards for that generation. When crossing two goats from different generations, the kids will move up one place from the lowest generation parent. For example, if you had an F2 doe and an F6 buck, you would only have an F3 kid. An F1 crossed with an F4 would be an F2 kid. The registration process with MDGA is slightly more complicated than with ADGA or AGS. You fill out the form, which is basically just the same as ADGA or AGS, but after that you have to send in copies of both Dams and Sire's papers. These papers can be ADGA, TMGR, IDGR, or NDGA. You also have to send in a profile pic and a side shot of the kid. This might seem like a lot, but MDGA has exceptional customer service and is totally willing to help you throughout the whole process. For more info, check out the MDGA website linked below. The other main difference between breeding standard and miniature dairy breeds is the shows. The MDGA does sanction a small number of shows, but there isn't a high enough demand for them to be accessible to everyone. So MDGA has come up with a solution called virtual shows or V-shows. Basically, all you have to do to compete in a V-show is to take nice setup pictures of your MDGA registered goats and send them in. V-shows are great because they have a low entry fee no stressed goats, no milk production loss, no exchanging diseases with other goats, and it's very easy to show bucks. There are a few cons though, and these are that they're not widely recognized, and there aren't that many entries. So it's kind of questionable if a win is really worth that much. This is my F1 weather, don't ya? 